Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, Thank hold on. Thank you so much I for calling in. Please let me know your name and That's okay. Uh, no rush. Wow, praise God. <laughs> praise God. Um, my name is Michaela, and I'm calling in from Texas. Awesome. How are you doing today, Michaela? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for calling in, and what's going on? Wow. First, I know the, the lady that just was calling you uh, said this too, but I really have to honor you and your yes and all the sacrifices seen and unseen that you've made to do what you're doing, your yes to the to the Lord. So thank you awesome. so much for that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because the first time that I ever heard you, um, it was a video. And I was like, I really don't like this guy. And now <laughs> I know you hear a lot, but now it's like, I don't have a palate for anything but the fire of God. So. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, super, super thankful. My husband That's and I awesome. are in this season really walking in the authority of Christ. And what that has looked like for us is doing deliverance. And so your videos have been incredibly helpful with encouraging us to do deliverance, even though we don't have like like 15 years of experience. So That's awesome, though. That, it's exciting to get involved and start doing the work. Yeah, it's humbling. It is crucifying my flesh um Come on. my question is about our friend who the lord has like had us walk alongside her to do deliverance and i'm asking for your advice on and i think i need to give some context here she is a seer in spirit so she sees the spiritual realm like i would walk into my home and see my husband sitting on the couch like she sees them and i understand that the enemy, like Satan does not, especially with that kind of gifting, does not want to let people like that go easily. And so we've been contending for her. We've done deliverance on her and they've, some of them have returned and she cannot tell them to go in the name of Jesus. They don't respond to the name of Jesus or the blood of Jesus. And so oftentimes we've been on the phone um, from our apartment. She lives 45 minutes away and we've okay. been like coming to these strongholds. Um, and so I'm just asking your advice in that kind of situation where like she she's not able with the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus to cast them out. And so I don't know if there's that has to do with an open door that's unknown or anything like that. But I would love to hear your advice. On now, that. is she go? Is she so she's a Christian? Is that right? Yes. And she's in desperately desperately wants to be set free like and she's is been she tormented gone, once she got deliverance did she go back to like a certain sin or back to the world or was there a moment where she like backslid for a while or how do you think those demons were able to come back in so we did deliverance on saturday the 20th and i had been walking with her in terms of lust and porn and like masturbation with in the past like two months prior to this okay. and so i've been walking alongside her as accountability because I was walking in that one time in my life and the Lord delivered me from it. And awesome. so the Lord had me come alongside her with that. Um, and so it has all really culminated to this moment where my husband really felt from the Lord that we needed to do deliverance specifically for this from the spirit of suicide for her, okay. um, which led to just like a whole bunch of stuff. And so this week she texted me and she said that she did go back to and watch porn. And so I know that's part of the reason why like they have come back but i don't understand why they're not leaving in the name of jesus yeah and, you know? and this is the thing that i'll say this i've said i say this a million times people that don't do deliverance don't understand what you're saying because when you do deliverance you'll understand some demons don't leave doesn't matter how many times you say jesus doesn't matter how many times you plead the blood the idea that oh it has to be quick is not true some of the demons are extremely stubborn and for whatever yeah. reason, they're able to withstand us. I've been in deliverances. Now, I don't want anyone to think I'm some master or have some special power. We all have the same authority and access. None of us have like more power than others. It's just we have the same authority, same access. I've been in deliverances where I know the person wants to be free and we've done everything, renouncing and unforgiveness. We've done worship <laughs> music and the person's full manifesting, but the demon just won't leave. And it's, it's so frustrating. 
it's so like disheartening because you're like i know this thing i've seen demons leave over and over why is it being stubborn for me what i'll do is i'll just sit there in the deliverance and ask the lord for a word of knowledge i feel like deliverance these type where you're really struggling are like a puzzle you're trying to solve and so for me it's like lord what's the next piece in the puzzle what am i missing what am i not seeing why is this demon so stubborn now i've come to find this is just me personally if your friend's listening this does not mean this is her okay i don't want her to think oh he's talking about me i've personally mm -hmm. come to find people that let's say after an hour or two the demon won't leave it's stubborn there's some type of open door some type of in their mind they know they're going to go back to that sin in their mind they don't really fully want to surrender that area of sin in their mind they're still like tentacles and connections to the world in their mind or in their heart and the demons somehow finding that thing to hold on to and really it doesn't have to leave it has that open legal right that open door that it's hanging on to and so sometimes i'll tell people is there anything you can think of that this demon's hanging on to is there any thing in your and it might take them a while to be like man you know what i just really in my mind feel like i'm never going to get free from this so you're giving them a legal right you think that you're going to go back to the porn or whatever it is right you could fill in the blank with a thousand wow. different sins so it's like somehow somehow subconsciously they didn't realize it but they're they're still hanging on to some idol or some sin or some compromise and the, the devil will use idolatry right there's idols in our life that's idolatry so it could be a hobby it could be an addiction it could be vaping i mean anything you could think of the devil will just hang on to and they just don't want to give that area up and so 99 of them they gave up but there's that one percent that the devil's hanging on to that little room you gave him and it's only a little bit right you only gave him a few inches or like a corner of a room but he's just hiding there and so when you do deliverance i think this is probably what happened okay i'll just tell you what my opinion on the whole situation i yeah. think you guys cast out a bunch of demons i don't think the demons came back i think you cast out a bunch of demons and i think there's just a bunch more demons so there was okay. more demons hiding that were hanging on and i don't know why this is and i don't have a scripture for this but i've come to find it's usually the strongest demons leave last yeah it's usually the strongest yeah. demons hang on the hardest so you probably know when you do deliverance at the very end it's like here we go Ooh. it's time to talk to the chief yeah. demon it's time to talk to the commander and these yeah. strong demons withstand the the weak demons they come out right away they're very easy a couple minutes and a yep. lot of times you don't even know they leave they're just leaving 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 but those strong demons so for me i think probably what happened was the strong demons are still there and yep. uh, yeah she probably went back to some sin i'm not necessarily convinced that all the demons came back from a one-time sin i personally okay. think that strong demon still there that's the stubborn one that's the one that won't leave and has found bitterness unforgiveness pride uh sin open door lust maybe it's hanging on to and it's gonna take maybe it takes her fasting you know it's like for some people they won't fast so for example let's say she's my friend and i say hey I really feel like you need to do a three-day water fast or like a one-day water fast or two-day and then we're gonna pray again some people won't do it they're just like nope not doing it so to me and I'm not trying to be rude it just tells me they're not that desperate because if I have a demon I want to get rid of sister I will fast uh, 21 days yeah. I'm down I'll lose all the way I'll get sick I don't care because I want freedom more than anything and for some people yeah. they just don't want it that bad and and likely and usually the deliverance minister wants them free more than they want to be free and i know how that is because i'm that way i'm like i want you free and for them it's like they're kind of apathetic because they've been living with it but she got she has to get to that place of desperation being willing to say hey let's do a two three day fast and you might have to even tell her hey i'll do it i'll do a fast with you let's do two days if she's never fasted let's do two days water only i'll fast with you we're gonna break this thing this type only comes out by prayer and fasting it's a strong stubborn mm. demon we're gonna fast this thing out we're gonna make your body an uncomfortable place for the demon to stay in mm -hmm. you're not gonna no mm -hmm. longer be you know a hilton five star whatever hotel for demons you're gonna be uncomfortable they're not going to want to be there we're going to we're going to literally drive them out with the fire of god with prayer with fasting and by the time we start praying for you deliverance they there's going to be no demons because those demons are like oh i don't even want to be here she's fasting she's praying she's in worship and yeah it's going to be powerful so that's i'd love to hear your thoughts on that but that's kind of what i believe is probably going on 
Yes, I, that was so helpful. Thank you. And I even something that you said, like the, even the space of doubt to hold on to like, well, in case I go back, it's just yes. even that. I feel like the Lord is really speaking to me right now of like, that is it. Like even the doubt of like, well, what if I slip back? Well, it's like, no, you, there can't even be a degree of anything because the enemy is going to take advantage of that. So I think that's something that I'm going to approach her with. Um, of like, no, this is when it's sealed, it's sealed and it's sealed by the blood of Jesus. That means that you can't, you can't go back to it. Absolutely. You have to burn every bridge and you have to make sure you tell her this likely when you start doing the deliverance prayer, talk to her because the demon has been lying to her for so long and constantly telling Mm -hmm. her, I'm never going to leave. I'm too strong. So-and-so is too weak. Whenever I go to deliverance and the demon starts saying Isaiah is too weak, he'll never cast me out. It's, it's a complete lie. A complete lie. Yeah. It's not, and I'm not saying that because I'm strong. I'm saying that because Christ is strong. I'm not coming as yeah. my ambassador representative. I'm coming as Christ's ambassador representative. So she has to n- lose agreement with that. She cannot be thinking, I'll never get free from this. If she speaks that out of her mouth, she's giving that demon yep. still a legal right. So you need to tell her, don't even think that. Don't even speak that. Recognize that as a lie. Cast that thought down. You will get set free. You will get delivered. The devil is a liar because that's probably where she's at. She's probably thinking, I'm never going to get free. It's hopeless. We've prayed already. We've already tried. Nothing happened. And that's one thing you don't want her to slip into that unbelief. Yep. Roger that. She is fasting right now. Good. And we're taking, so she, my husband and I are taking communion every day as well because we're like, we got to, if if we're trying to get out of something, that means we need the Holy Spirit Come in on. us to replace that. So, this has given me a lot to think about um, and take to the Lord. And thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Um, like I said, we're new to this. so You're I'm, doing good, though. <laughs> you're doing good. There's- and you're learning on the job. You're learning on the job. I tell people, you're not going to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. Just start doing it. And you'll learn. And I'm sure like you're learning as you go. And it's beautiful. It's like, hey, don't wait around. Just go do it. And you'll learn. And God will teach you. Yeah. And yeah, something that you said was like, if you guys are okay with your friends and family being demonized, that's fine. I'm not. And that's the place that I'm in. I am not okay with this. Like I got to walk, actually walk in my authority now. So it's been really humbling and really good. So thank you so much for your time and your expertise. And we will pray on this and move forward. Thank you so much, Isaiah. Absolutely. And then too, I want to add, once your eyes are open, I mean, you know this, once your eyes are open to how real this is, you can never go yeah. back to normal life. You can never go back to nope. just church on Sunday. Um, even people I know that backslide, they like do deliverance, they're involved in ministry and they go back to the world. I've had one friend tell me, dude, I can't even live the same. I can't even go to parties because I know the demons are around. I know the demons are real. Like it changes the way you look at the whole world and you'll never go back once you do. It's very hard to go back to the stands once you've been on the field. You know what I mean? It's like, no, I don't want to go watch the game. I want to be in the game. I want to play. I've already been on the field. So yep. yeah, I'm excited for you guys. Yep. It's all just yep. awesome. It's just continuing to advance this kingdom and you guys are on the right track. Thank you. Yeah, I will have to say like the amount of things that I even see in the world, like symbols and, and people, like it's just like, this, it's become so obvious. And I'm like, mm-hmm. wow. And my, and what the Lord's been showing me and because I've given him permission and we've just like, let it be your life in us, not not us, maybe your hand, not ours. And so, yeah, it's just been like, whoa, Holy awesome. Spirit, wow, really crazy. But um, praise God, and we will continue to co-labor with him um, and bring the kingdom of heaven down. So, Amen. Well, I hope to meet you guys one day, and thanks again for calling in. Yes, uh, likewise, Isaiah. Thank awesome. you so much. God bless you. Take care. God bless you too. Bye. Bye. Really great question. Good questions today, guys. We're getting some good good dialogue. You guys are pulling stuff out of me that I didn't even haven't said or haven't said in a long time. So really good.